Kindrel is a technology company you might not have heard of, but you use it virtually every day when paying at an FPOS terminal, turning on a light switch or receiving a parcel from overseas. Kindrel was spun out of the American multinational IBM less than two years ago and instantly became the world's largest provider of IT infrastructure services with about 85,000 employees. I caught up with its chairman and chief executive, Martin Schroeter, a little earlier. Sure, sure. So it's a good question because we are, we are kind of a new brand, right? We were a spin out from IBM. And what was spun out is, think of it as 85,000 people, mostly engineers, 85,000 people who run the technology infrastructure kind of that runs the world. So it's the technology infrastructure that runs the banking systems and the mobile phone systems and the airline reservation systems and the supply chain. So we run that technology infrastructure to make sure, for instance, here in Australia, when, you're, when you use FPOS, that it works, to make sure that when you get on a train here in New South Wales, Transport New South Wales, the train system opens the gate for you and you can gate in and gate out. So we run that infrastructure in about 63 countries. So in, in some ways, in some ways we have you know 30 plus years of deep, deep experience in how the how these systems run. And like I said, we were a spin from Australia, uh, from IBM not quite two years ago. So we're also a startup. So we're like the world's largest startup running technology. And in Australia itself, like how big are you? So we run, uh, we run Australia. Australia is one of our 10 biggest markets. Right. Right. So it's one of our 10 biggest. And we run here, you know, what, what you would see in other places where hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue, right? So we're a big, stable uh, uh, provider of service. But again, we run the mission critical workloads here like we do in other parts. So we run banks here, financial services companies, we run government uh, uh, work here, we run insurance companies, we run industrials, energy companies, same sort of footprint that we would see globally. Uh, we see here in Australia. Mission critical, hearts and lungs work. And since the spin-off roughly two years ago, I guess the whole idea was to find new opportunities for the company. Uh, now you can partner with, with other tech brands. Is that right? As opposed to just working solely with IBM in the past. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point because one of the things we got from the spin was the freedom of action to go to, to move into and work with uh, technology companies that really matter to our customers. And we were born with very deep IBM experience, which was valuable and our customers loved it, but they were also asking all the time, Microsoft, work with Microsoft, work with Google, work with AWS, work with SAP and Oracle and Cisco and all those other firms that are important to them. And now we have the freedom of action that we've formed really deep and meaningful partnerships with the enterprise tech companies that really matter to our customers, really matter to how Australia delivers technology in the enterprise space and all over the world. How challenging was it to uncouple from IBM and all the all the tech systems that you would have shared? Yeah, it's uh, boy, it's interesting to. It's, Is it over now? No, no, no. <laughs> it, it it's not. We we're close. We're close. So so a couple of things. You know, IBM had what what they called an integrated model, right? So so they had different brands, different service capabilities, but it all went. It all came together in front of a customer. So they had to what I called unmix the paint, if you will, in order to create an entity. And in that unmixing of the paint process, we still, we still do today, we're about 50 days away from finishing, but we still rely on, uh, on IBM's HR systems and, 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 uh, and procurement systems and, and their ledger, all those things. So we are in the process of unhooking completely from all of those. And like I said, we have to finish in the next 50 or so days okay. on our Clock's two year ticking. anniversary. Clock <laughs> is definitely ticking. Uh, now, you're very familiar with Australia. I understand you're a citizen, used to live here. What's brought you back this time around? Look, it is a big, important market for us, right? And it's important for us as we go through the transformation journey we're on. It's important for, for, for me, for all of our senior manage, management to spend time with the teams and with the customers who are helping drive that transformation. So, so th this timing, for instance, we spend a lot of time with our customers, mm -hmm. listening, getting feedback on how our transformation's going. Are we showing up differently? Are, we, are you seeing new capabilities and innovation from what we're doing? And then again, we, we spend a lot of time with, uh, with our own team, with Kindrels here, understanding is the culture we're describing now of how we want to operate? Is our aspirational culture starting to show up? Is it your as-lived experience? 
as you would imagine, the, the culture of, of an 85,000 person division inside a, a big matrixed organization is different from the culture we need as a sure. public company. So it really is spend time with customers, spend time with kindrels, and of course, government's important. So we'll spend some time with, with government and we'll spend some, some time with those who are helping us think about what is our next investment phase here in Australia? Where do we think there's opportunity? Where do we wanna think about placing some more bets as we start to grow here in Australia too. Look, we know it's been a tough economic environment for the last couple of years, high inflation still. Companies are tightening up their spending, cutting costs. How concerned are you with some of your bigger clients potentially? Are they willing to invest right now in IT services or are they starting to hold back? Yeah, it, you know, for us and the role we play in their environments and for the role we play in their hearts and lungs, the, the, we don't really see the demand patterns shift so much in sure. any macro environment, right? If you're a bank, uh, if you're a bank, you can't decide, I'm only going to run my infrastructure for six days out of the week, right? It's just not, it's not, it's not viable. So, so what we see is a fairly stable economic environment with regard to our own services. Sure. And then again, the role we play is helping them get their infrastructure ready for whatever macro environment they're envisioning, but help them get their infrastructure ready if, for instance, they have uh, resiliency as top of mind, or there's a lot of discussion now about AI and how to use it in your business. We start with them, helping them architect their data, helping make sure their data is secure, et cetera. So, so the role we play in our customers' environment sort of keeps us insulated from the, the macro trends. And then the role we play within their technology environments really allows them to keep thinking uh, over the long term about what we can help them with and get them ready for whatever is next. AI has been a big topic the last couple of years. What's Kindrel doing with AI and automation? Yeah, so, so it, it plays an important role in how we run Kindrel today. So we have a platform called Kindrel Bridge. And what Kindrel Bridge is doing essentially is, is uh, with the largest pool of enterprise infrastructure data, as exciting as that phrase <laughs> sounds, but, but it is exciting for us. With the largest pool of data, we know better and, than anybody else how systems interrelate, what works well, what doesn't work well. So, so part of what Kindrel Bridge for, is doing for us is watching all these systems and really fixing problems before they become problem because okay. we know what to expect. And we also run uh, automation across our entire, uh, our entire delivery network so that, so that our people can work on the things that really matter to customers and that really drive value for customers. So we absolutely use AI, what, you know, what we would have five years ago called machine learning that AI sits at the heart of how we run and how we deliver. Now, customers are also starting to talk to us about generative AI, right? Which right. is sort of the latest, the latest part of this. And, and again, we can help them get their data ready. We can help them make sure it's secure as they start to do some experiments with it. So it sits at the heart of what we do in, in how we run Kindrel, and it's starting to become part of how our customers think about engaging us because we sit sort of at the front end of that. In fact, we just uh, enhanced our relationship with Microsoft a few weeks ago uh, when we announced a partnership with them to help our, get our joint customers, our joint uh, 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 shared customers ready for generative AI by working with uh, Microsoft and Azure and again, our engineers and, and, and our skills to help sort of figure out what, what is possible, what, what can we start to think about doing. Martin Schroeder, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Kindrel. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much.